This is a turning right side. This is a strong left side. This is a turning right side. But people get mixed up with how big a turn actually is. So if I get someone out here that turns more than that, they'll feel like they're not turning at all if they do it properly. Coil is different to turn. So obviously if I just set up like this and turn, I'm going to turn too much in the wrong direction and then I have to do this to get back and then I'll leave my arms behind and then you'll get told you come over it, you come inside, you come outside, you cast it, you do it. This is a turning right side, this is a strong left side, this is a turning right side. But people get mixed up with how big a turn actually is. So if I get someone out here that turns more than that, they'll feel like they're not turning at all if they do it properly. Coil is different to turn. So obviously if I just set up like this and turn, I'm going to turn too much in the wrong direction and then I have to do this to get back and then I'll leave my arms behind and then you'll get told you come over it, you come inside, you come outside, you cast it, you do it. Now Pete's legs look like they're going this way towards where he's pointing. His legs don't look like they're this way on the back. When he turns, he's just going around that angle that he sets up and holding it. Now, when he comes down and he holds this angle, it keeps this left side strong so they can hit the right side against it. I call it right sided because we can hit with our right sides. A lot of players, even a lot of players on tour, don't hit with their right sides. They hit underneath and hold on. So, so Pete gets the sameness of flight. And when he's hitting a club on the course, when you're watching him, on his good days, it's like what I call true loft because the face, no brother, True loft is just a term I use for the face of the club in relation to my sternum. So if anybody says you've got to have a square club face, most of the time they're thinking about the club face being square to the target line or square to my wrist. It's actually at a right angle to my sternum and if I'm over and I've got my shape and I do that, I maintain that angle. When I come in, I maintain that angle and when I go through, I maintain it. That's what square is. That gives you true loft, three iron, four iron, five iron, six iron, seven iron. People that can't get true loft have trouble with longer clubs because they're trying to adjust the face to give them the loft on the way through. Thanks, Darren. Thank now, I want some questions from anybody because really people don't understand what turning is. People don't understand what weight transference is. Now, they're the main things that people work on transferring more weight to get more power, turning more because you're a bit older and you need to turn more to get power. Now, the whole thing about turning is you have to have a starting point. If I start from here level and I turn, it's a different turn as if I start with some bias. So it's a word for, turning's a word for going round like this. And there's no direction to it. So if you coil properly, when Peter does that backswing, just swing it back, Pete. When he does this backswing, there's going to be a point where this finishes and the downswing starts, right? So he's actually swinging his arms very early because his body's right. Now people whose bodies are wrong back here and they overturn have to do this again with their bodies coming in. Good players get stuck behind it. Other people come over the top of it. So that's that coming over the top of that line that we talked about before, the straight line. So basically, we know that if he pulls out a <coughs> six iron, it's going to go through that window all the time, travel at whatever yardage it is, and come down within a couple of yards of where that is. That's because he's got control of the face of the club in relation to his posture. Now, it's possible to square the club. Uh, this from here. It's possible to square the club like this. Right? So it's possible to square the club face with all that motion, and that's what we call air, uh, eye hand coordination. And, and some people say that's a natural way to swing. Well, to try and repeat that, now we've got players that can do it. You can name them on the, on the tour. Bubba Watson, he's falling out of a tree, right? Everything moves all over the place. Uh, Jim Furyk's got a strange motion as well. Those guys are the best players in the world. So all we could do with that is say, my grandfather smoked till he was 98 and didn't have any problems. Then you've had about 14, 20 year olds that are dead from smoking. So you have those exceptions, 
And then people say, well, why should I work on my game? Because those guys can, can play like that. I don't have an answer. All I know is... Huh? They're freaks. They're freaks. All I know is to get longevity and to play the game for a long time, and even me at 74, I can still get around a reasonable score and hit it all right. I've had to work on my game and work on my body all the years I've been on the planet. A lot of them have good fits too, guys, like good arms and wrists, like Laura. And Laura's got great arms and wrists, yeah. and she does a bit of Watusi with the, with the feet and stuff. But it, it, everybody's got good things in their swings, and the better the players are and the more they practice, the more they can get away with it. But I'm trying to simplify the game for people who can't spend all day practicing, or are too busy to practice, that can just do five or ten minutes a day, like Darren, you know, to try and get people to do five or ten minutes a day with the bag, in the mirror, with the shadow. Like, take this heavy bag home and just do this for me for a couple of days. And that'll teach you to turn properly, it'll give you core, you can speed it up, and then you, everything will move the right way. Did you do anything with the bag this week? Oh, oh. Did you get in the mirror? Yeah, I came here yesterday. So it's very hard to get people to try and do things to train their bodies because there's so much information that goes into our heads and we stand over the ball, we go totally blank because we haven't trained our bodies to do it. So I always say when Pete's swinging well, he's, he's a machine. And basically you could chop his head off and he'd still hit it like that because of his angles. But golf is very angular, the same as anybody been watching the games. Anybody been watching the, uh, what's it called? Commonwealth. Commonwealth Games. Some of the sports are very much structured on form, right? Gymnastics, high jumping, long jumping, running, they all have these things that they all do from a certain position to get maximum stuff. But golf's not like that. We can start from a totally wrong place, do everything wrong and still play the game at a decent level.